Today we are doing the sleeve video. Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today we are doing the sleeve video and I'm super, super excited. I mentioned it in my runway review video because for spring, summer 2021, it is all about the dramatic sleeves for me. Like absolutely, I'm all about the sleeves and I have been for season after season. And so I have started doing some puffy sleeves, but I wanted to review them so that I can absolutely make sure that we're on the same page and that I am giving you guys the best and easiest way to transform your thrifted clothes, the clothes in your wardrobes to give them that dramatic sleeve look. Just like this shirt that I have on right now. It used to be just a regular Adidas t-shirt, but I took some Adidas uh, track pants and gave this a leg of mutton sleeve. That's what this is called. So um, yes, I'm going to teach you how to do three sleeves. The leg of mutton, just like I said, a balloon sleeve and a bishop sleeve. So I hope you guys are super excited. Let's do it. All right, so that we can really focus on these dramatic sleeves and making sure we can do them properly, we're going to keep this simple and do these all to men's dress shirts. In order to make a pattern for our new puffy sleeve, we're going to use an old shirt with a sleeve that is long enough for your arms. So I'm gonna use a seam ripper and take the sleeve off. And I just cut the cuff off at the bottom. Next, I'll lay it out on paper and trace it. Now I'll cut it out and this is a basic sleeve pattern. And just to make sure you traced it correctly, you can fold it in half and make sure both sides agree. Mine was a little off, so I'll cut off the excess. All right, so let's kick this off with a leg of mutton sleeve, which I've done a ton of times here on my channel, but some of you have said that you still have a hard time with it, so I'm hoping that this is going to make it super clear. For this one, you wanna cut off the top portion of the sleeve, and I really like that because it typically allows me to reuse the bottom of the sleeve without doing much to it. All right, so let's focus on the top. We're gonna cut it into equal parts. Mine are an inch and a half wide. Once I have it marked, then I'll cut them apart. And in order to make the new pattern, they're gonna be spread like this. If I was really smart, I would have left them connected along the curve, but I didn't. However, you absolutely can. Now let's lay it out on a new sheet of paper and extrude the curve. In the past, for my leg of mutton sleeves, I've taken the sleeve way up like this to get that big poof on the sleeves, but I'm gonna keep it normal today and see if I like it. So I'm gonna make this one black because I wasn't super impressed with the men's dress shirt selection at my thrift store last week. But just make sure you try it on and add a pin at the shoulder right where you want the sleeve to start. This one is on the end of my shoulder. If I wanted that sleeve to really pop, I put the pin a little bit further up on my shoulder. Now I'll lay it flat and cut a curve from under the arm to the pin. Now I'll take another black shirt and lay the pattern on top. You can see that it's not wide enough, but I'm just gonna go for it. it won't won't be so puffy, but I think it'll still work. Now that I have it traced out pretty evenly, I can cut it out. Then I can take the cuffs from the original shirt and use the length that I need in order to make the sleeve as long as I want it. Next, we can get ready to sew the sleeves back on, but we need to fold each sleeve in half first and sew down the arm seam. Okay, now we can turn the shirt inside out and the sleeve right side out. I like to put the sleeve inside and match up the underarm seams first. Then I go out from there on each side and add clips to continue connecting the sleeve to the bodice. Now you can gather the top of the sleeve first like the one I have on, or you can pleat it like I'm about to do. When I pleat it, I just add a box pleat at the top and then clip it. Then I make pleats on each side and clip them in place. Once it's all clipped, you can sew it together. Now that I have the top of the sleeve attached, I can add the cuff portion. And you can see that on one sleeve, you'll have that button placket from the second shirt. That's one of my favorite detail about these blouses, hands down. And of course, I will show you all the final results and styling at the end. All right, so number two is the bishop sleeve. I've been wanting to try this one for so long. For this one, I'll cut the whole pattern into two inch strips and spread it apart. Once again, I could have left it connected at the top to make it easier, but of course, I wasn't thinking about it at the time. Again, I'll trace it on another piece of paper to make my pattern. But remember, the wider you spread it will make the sleeve more voluminous. 
All right, this time we're gonna start off with this white shirt and I'll add the pin right on top of my shoulder bone rather than on the end of my shoulder this time. And I think I'm gonna take this one in some, so I'll add a pin under my arm where I wanna take it in. Once I have it laid flat, I'll sketch a new outline and cut it out. I tend to just follow the original outline when I'm taking things in and that does seem to work out. Once I have it cut, I can turn it inside out and sew down the side seams. Now let's cut out a new sleeve. You can see that I have these amazing French cuffs and I'm definitely gonna reuse these to make this shirt even more dramatic. But once again, the shirt isn't big enough for these sleeves. And I'm not compromising on this one though. So I'm gonna completely cut the shirt apart to piece together this sleeve pattern. So if I fold it like this, I should be able to use the sleeves from that shirt to make up the difference, but the sleeves still aren't long enough to cover the whole pattern, so we'll still have to add a little piece at the top. So I'll cut out the main piece and then fold the pattern so it meets in the middle. Then I'll use that sleeve and another little piece to make up the underside of the sleeve. And that means instead of having a sleeve that you sew one seam underneath the arm, I'll have a two-piece sleeve that I sew down on each side. And that's exactly what I'll do. I'll sew down each side of the sleeve. And once that's done, I'll gather the whole bottom of the sleeve and gather just the shoulder portion of the top of the sleeve. Next, I'll add the French cuff back on at the bottom. Then I'll gather the top of the sleeve to be the same width as the armhole and sew the sleeve back in. You can see it's a nice puffy sleeve with a dramatic cuff. If I add a corset on top, I might be able to be on Bridgerton. All right, so next up, let's do our balloon sleeve. First, you'll wanna measure how tall you want your balloon because it could be below your elbow or above. It's up to you. So I'm gonna cut that length off and once again, I'm gonna cut it into one and a half inch strips. This one is just being separated equally. The more you separate the pieces, the bigger your bubble will be. And I'm gonna tell you right now that I didn't spread mine far enough apart because I like my bubble sleeves to be dramatic. But let's go with this and see where it leads us. For this one, we're gonna take advantage of the whole black and white trend and mix two shirts. I verified that the buttons do line up, so I'm going to cut each of them in half in the back. Once they're both cut, I can sew them together down the back to make it into one shirt. And you can see here that the collars do line up perfectly, but it does get a little off further down, but I'm okay with that. All right, so let's use the extra pieces that we cut off for the balloon of the sleeve. And you do need to make it a little bit longer so you can have room for that balloon to puff out. But in hindsight, I would just make a straight rectangle or a slight angle on that rectangle, but nothing like this dramatic angle. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So next, I'm gonna take off the cuffs and cut off a portion of the sleeve. You'll fold the bubble in half and sew down the side seam. And you can really see right here what I mean about that angle. It really, really should be just a big rectangle. And you're also gonna add a gathering stitch on each end. Once it's gathered to the same width as the sleeve and pinned in place, you can sew it together. Now, right here, I'm gonna tell you a big tip. The top of this sleeve must be fitted. You can't have the sleeve oversized and then add a bubble. It won't look right. But I'll show you exactly what I mean in a minute. Right here, I'm gonna gather the end of the sleeve and put the cuff back on. All right, now look at this mess. I tried to go back in and take in the sleeve afterwards without removing the bubble and now it's just a hot mess. It was a mess, now it's a hot mess. So I could just go back and do it correctly, which means I take in the sleeve and side of the shirt like I did on the second one before putting on the bubble, but I decided to try something different. Let's keep the sleeve wide and make it into a double bubble. So I took the bubble off and turned the shirt inside out. Then I drew a line at the top of the sleeve on both sides. Now I'll take a piece of elastic that fits snugly on my upper arm and I'll add it along the line with a zigzag stitch. And that means I'll stretch the elastic while I'm sewing that zigzag stitch. That'll cause it to draw up on my arm, creating that bubble effect. Then I'll add the bubble back on just like before. And I'll add another piece of elastic that fits snugly on my forearm right at that seam. And you can see here that I actually made a little mistake while sewing the elastic. 
right here where the fabric folded in and made a little extra ruffle, but I actually like it. So I'm gonna see if I can replicate it on the other side. And I think I did, I, I actually did, which is crazy, so yeah. Yay for mistakes. Lastly, I cut a strip of seam binding from the black shirt scraps and I'm gonna add it to the seam down the back to make it look nice, especially for that collar when it's folded down. And let's see how they all turned out. All right, so we're gonna start off with the black one that we did with the leg of mutton sleeve. This one, like I said, is like this t-shirt. I've done it a ton of times with the crop trench coat, which is in my shop right now. I have, I'm selling some of these right now at blueprintsignature.com. So if you're interested in purchasing that, go head over to there and um, check that out. But I've also done it on a t-shirt, just a regular My I'm the Blueprint t-shirt and a half t-shirt. So this is one of my favorite ones, but I want to emphasize that depending on how tall you make that top curve, you can create more puff at the top. This one we made pretty shallow. So you're gonna see the difference in how this one turned out. Let's check it out. love this one with the cuffs turned up it's really cool something casual that I can throw on of course I could dress it up and I'll show you the next shirt you can dress any of these up or down um they don't have to be dressy it's just giving you that you know that little oomph that you want all right so let's talk about this bishop sleeve with the extra long cuffs oh I was so excited and when I say excited I was so excited to realize that one of my white shirts had a long cuff I didn't even realize when I bought it that it had a long cuff but that's exactly exactly what I wanted. And so let's check that one out right now. Now, I was in the back of my mind thinking about doing a cutout in the back to have an open back because I have seen a shirt on this website right here. I'm gonna show you, you guys know I love, love, love her website um, just to get inspiration. And if you are interested in these pieces, definitely check out that website. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to do it because I really want to be able to wear this shirt to everywhere and so I didn't do the cutout but it would have been killer with the cutout in the back but yes I put on those long pants that you guys just absolutely love in my last thrift haul so um, I think they pair well together I was a little bit nervous putting on something big at the top and something big like long and you know um, big at the bottom but I think it works if you want to bring all the drama this is the drama like I'm really really loving this I'm really really loving this and lastly, let's talk about this altered um, balloon sleeve shirt. You guys saw it wasn't quite turning out the way I wanted it. So now it is a balloon animal sleeve. <laughs> you know how like the balloon animals, you do them like this and now, you know, it's something else. So I think this is more like a balloon animal sleeve. <laughs> This is my favorite, 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 favorite. I ended up just taking a dress and putting a belt underneath it and folding it up so it was really short underneath there because I really think this one makes a really cute dress. I didn't feel comfortable with nothing underneath it. I think it needed just a little bit of another layer. I just think it's so fun and so flirty and um, yeah. I am loving, loving, loving this outfit with the boots and with the sleeves and even my mistake. I really, really like how that turned out. So yeah, really seeing these videos, I hope my overall goal with this is to get you guys to try these things and not to be so afraid of them. Um, yeah, some of these things, you know, you mess up. I messed up. 
I messed up several times, actually. I really know that you guys can try this and I really hope that you do. If you love puffy sleeves, give it a try. Just buy some of the cheapest dress shirts you can find and go ahead and give it a try or t-shirts. Dress shirts, t-shirts, and t-shirts are actually a little bit easier because they stretch. So um, go ahead and give it a try. If you're interested in the other videos that I have mentioned in this video, they are right here for you. And don't forget to check out Next Top Upcycler. We are nearing very close to the end. So if you missed those episodes, definitely check them out so that you can be able to vote on April 24th. If you have not subscribed, definitely subscribe because we're doing all kind of crazy, amazing stuff on this channel. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.